Wednesday, what do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Do you believe that it's possible to bring something from the world of the formless, from the world of a dream, into the world of the physical? Most of us were raised to become ordinary. Extraordinary is something very, very different. This is about recognizing within yourself that there's something very, very extraordinary that you haven't been trained to believe in, to come to a place where you can apply it and put it into your life. But more than that, you can go way beyond ordinary. You can go way beyond just being average. If you would like to accomplish something, you must first expect it of yourself. And my question to you is, what do you expect of yourself? Do you expect to be able to perform miracles, to attract into your life the kind of prosperity that you are entitled to? Do you expect that you can manifest the kind of relationships that you would like? You must change what's possible for you and what you believe is possible for you. But the question becomes, who am I? Who are you that never changes? Who you are is that soul that I spoke about a few moments ago. That soul that says, I want to expand. I want to be free. I want to go to a place where I understand that who I am is birthless, deathless, changeless. The direction we take in life is far more important than the place that our ego parks us in this present moment that who we are is this divine infinite being that keeps occupying new bodies endlessly until we leave this body and then move on and there is no beginning there is no end there is only now each and every one of us so the soul the part of you that is extraordinary the part of you that came into this world and knows I can be anything I can do anything I can accomplish anything that I place my attention on because if you want to accomplish something you must first just expect it of yourself that within each and every one of us there is this marvelous knowing that is really and truly God, ourselves, each and every one of us. And what is the highest self? The highest self is the self that you haven't been trained to believe in. You've been trained to believe in your ordinary awareness. Your highest self is where you begin to recognize your connection to your source, to the Tao, to the divine. To God you are God you are the I am that I am you are consciousness you are the creator this is the mystery this is the great secret known by the seers and prophets and mystics throughout the ages this is the truth that you can never know intellectually if you want to understand something spiritually you must first experience it you must come to know this within. That you use the words, I am, you are citing the name of God, right from the holiest books. And every time you say the words, I am weak, I am poor, I am unlucky, I am unhappy, I am sick, I am unable to attract into my life what you want. You are desecrating the name of God. You must be conscious of how you use these words. I am. I am strong. I am well. I am content. Even if your senses tell you something different. I am. Imagination. Many of our greatest thinkers have spoken about the power of imagination. William Blake said that what is now proved was once only imagined. 
Now think about the importance of that. If you want to have something show up in your life, the kind of person you would like to become, manifest something new into your life, something powerful, whatever it might be, you obviously must first be able to imagine it. Your imagination. This is yours and yours alone. You can place anything into your imagination that you want to place there. Independent of what anybody else says about it, independent of what your senses tell you, independent of all the evidence that may be to the contrary, you can place into your imagination an I am that represents what you would like to attract into your life and make it come into fruition. You never want to place into your imagination any thought that you would not want to materialize. You never want to allow in your imagination to be contaminated by the way life used to be. Your imagination is yours. Don't let any other people influence you. Never allow people's ideas about what is possible or impossible for you to occupy your imagination. You have to be able to call the things which you have not seen yet materialize and manifest into your physical world. You have to be able to say to yourself, I call those things that I would like to become as if they already do. And you place into your imagination fearlessly the I am's which you would like to create for yourself. Disregard appearances, conditions. In fact, disregard all evidence of your senses. That is what your eyes and ears tell you that deny the fulfillment of your desire, whatever it is you want to attract into your life. Disregard appearances, conditions, in fact, all evidence of your senses that deny the fulfillment of your desire. Rest in the assumption that you already are what you want to be. For in that determined assumption, you and your infinite being your extraordinary self, which is what this program is about, are merged in creative unity and with your infinite being, God, all things are possible. God never fails. And you are a piece of that which never fails. We have used our imagination. We have placed something into our imagination as an I am, which is the name of God. I am strong. I am healthy. I am kind. I am prosperous, I am getting the job that I'm applying for, I am whatever it might be, I am. And then you have practiced calling it as if that which does not exist as though it did. And then you move now from the world of the intellect because understanding something intellectually is very different than understanding something spiritually. To understand something spiritually, you must experience it. And in order to experience it, you have to experience it in your imagination as an I am, but you must be able to feel it. Our feelings are the things that take place in our body. Make your future dream a present fact by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So whatever it is that you would like to experience in your life, this, remember, your imagination is yours. Everything that now exists was once imagined. Therefore, everything that is going to exist must first be imagined, okay? You advance confidently in the direction of your own dreams and endeavor to live the life which you have imagined you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. It will chase after you if you can place into your imagination what it is that you would like to attract and begin to feel it. That which you feel yourself to be, you are. And you are given that which you are. So assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish and your wish must be realized so live in the feeling of being the one you want to be and that you shall be every feeling makes a subconscious impression 
And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, it must be expressed. Your feelings are different from your thoughts. Your feelings are what you experience in your body. The dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. I am healthy says I feel healthy and I feel healthy. I feel great. I don't determine if I am well on the basis of what it says on a piece of paper or on the basis of what somebody else out there tells me. I live my life feeling within my body that I am strong, I am capable, I am able. And that is not just something that I say. It's not just an affirmation. An affirmation is an intellectual exercise. This is a spiritual knowing within that I am well, I am content. You have to start retraining your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind, it responds to what it is that you suggest to it. Now the intriguing thing about your subconscious mind, your habitual mind, is that um, it can't make a distinction between what it is that you are feeling as a result of what you have placed into your imagination and assumed the feeling of it, and what you are experiencing every day in your life. If you tell, if you go around feeling unhappy, depressed, miserable, sad, whatever, if you, your subconscious mind says, oh, so this is what it is that you would like to attract into your life. And the universal subconscious mind, to which we were all connected, that we call the creative source of the universe, the divine mind, God, the Tao, whatever you might want it to be, at, it will begin to offer you experiences that match up to what it is that you are feeling so your body responds to what it is you place into your subconscious mind. You have to retrain it. So most people use the last five minutes of their day <clears throat> as they're about to enter into sleep to review all of the things that they don't like and all of the things that didn't work and all of the people that hurt their feelings and all of the stuff that is going on in their life that they wish weren't happening. This is their worry time. This is the time when you fill your mind with all of this stuff and then you go off into sleep and he opens your ears and seals your instructions while you are slumbering. That's right out of the book of Job. And so the last five minutes of your day as you're about to marinate for eight hours in your subconscious mind with your unconscious state, you want to go into that state. Even if you just, even if your senses tell you, oh, this is where you're just fooling yourself and so on. You don't want to use your senses and the internet and other people's opinions, what you see, what you hear. You want to let go of all of that and recognize that anything that you want to attract or create for yourself in your life begins with what you have placed in your imagination and have assumed the feeling of that wish fulfilled and now you're going to practice it. What if I do everything that you say and it doesn't work? The student should constantly remind yourself if it doesn't feel natural, if it doesn't feel natural, it isn't going to work. As long as you are having any thoughts of condemnation, criticism, or judgment towards any of God's children, you are throttling the great I am presence within you that is God. You can't have any thoughts towards any of God's children that involve criticism, judgment, or condemnation. We are all just doing what we know how to do. And we can't ask any more of anyone. If you would like to accomplish something, you must first expect it from yourself. Every one of you, you are a spark that can grow 
until you recognize that you truly are divine beings. Because in every moment of your life, and every moment of your lives, you have this choice. You can either be a host to God, or a hostage to your ego. It's your call. God bless you, and God bless you. Thank you.